Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregson. Welcome to the next video in your Calculus 2 video series. Today we're going to talk about section 11.9, representing functions as power series. So the big idea is that we know about the power representation of certain functions. And now, using either substitution or differentiation and integration, we want to be able to find new power series representations for new functions. And then we're also going to discuss some applications, why in some cases we'd prefer to use the series representation versus the function representation. Now in this specific video, we're going to focus on the first one, substitution. So far we've seen that a series can converge to a function. So for instance, we've seen that the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of x to the n minus 1 looks like this. Well, when n equals 1, we get x to the 0 power, which is 1 and then we get plus x, plus x squared, plus x cubed, plus so on and so forth. And this is a geometric series, so we know it converges to 1 over 1 minus x. And this is true when the absolute value of x is less than 1. And so we know that this series is equal to this function. So on this interval, these two things are equal, and we express them with this equation. But because we have an equation here, we can manipulate both sides of our equation. There is no reason I couldn't multiply both my sides of my equation by 2. So if we look at this next example, we have 2 times that series. Well, if our original series was the sum of these terms, and I multiply the sum by some value, I can distribute across that sum. And so I'd really get 2 plus 2x plus 2x squared plus 2x cubed plus dot, 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 dot. Now this is also going to be geometric, but I just have a different a value in that general form for the geometric series. And so the net result would be I'd get 2 over 1 minus x as the function that this series would converge to. And this would still be true when the absolute value of x is less than 1. So what we see here is that if I multiply my series by 2, the resulting function is also just multiplied by 2. So if I was looking for the series representation for this function, or any value up in the numerator, I could simply get it by taking the series that I know, the series for 1 over 1 minus x, and just multiplying it by that factor. Now the other thing we can do is actually change the value of r, that ratio in our geometric series, by substitution, basically substituting some different value in for x. So for instance, if my first series was x raised to this power n minus 1, and now my new series, I just have x squared over 3 raised to this power, well, once again, I could write this series out by just taking this series and replacing all the x's by this new expression. So I'd have x squared over 3 plus x squared over 3 squared, x squared over 3 cubed, so on and so forth. And what is this going to converge to? The same function I had in the first example, except, once again, replacing x with x squared over 3. Now this one we have to be a little bit more careful here. We also have to make that substitution in our statement for where the interval, for the convergence interval. So this is when the absolute value of x squared over 3 is less than 1. But just once we write that statement out, we can then kind of simplify to say this thing simplifies to when the absolute value of x squared would be less than 1 third or when the absolute value of x is less than 1 over the square root of 3. So this would be the interval of convergence here. So what we can see is, given this known series that I started with, I can multiply my series by values, and I can make substitution to generate the series for new functions. Now in application, what we're going to want to be able to do is start with the new function and be able to work backwards to the series. So how are we going to do that? So in general, if we have a function to start with, if we can algebraically manipulate it to have the form, and here this is you know less than a mathematical expression here, stuff over 1 minus stuff, but that's the idea because you know our function that we know this series for is basically 1 over 1 minus x. So if I can get my new function to have that general form, then I can modify the series to find the series for the new function. So let's see this thing in action here. Here I have the function x over 3x squared plus 2. And I need to get in the form of something over 1 minus something. All right, so what am I going to do? Well, the first thing I can do is factor out that x out of the numerator. I can rewrite this as x times 1 over 
3x squared plus 2. And then maybe I could just rearrange the denominator here. So I have 2 plus 3x squared. Then next, I want to turn this value into a 1. So what I'm going to do is factor out a 2 out of the denominator. When I factor that out, I'll get a 2 out here. And when I factor that 2 out of the denominator, I'll get 1 plus 3 halves x squared. And so lastly, I can just write this as 1 over 1 minus negative 3 halves x squared. And so now I really have this in the form 1 over 1 minus something. And so I know what the series for this is. That's just the series that I had above with x replaced with negative 3 halves x squared. So now I can use that series. So this is x over 2 times the sum of, from i equals 1 to infinity, not just x raised to the i minus 1, but negative 3 halves x squared raised to the i minus 1. And I can either leave in that form, or actually I can pass that x over 2 in the summation, because that, sum, that x over 2 doesn't depend on i at all. So I could certainly, look at this as the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of x over 2, negative 3 halves x squared to the i minus 1. And so now we have the series representation for this function, x over 3x squared plus 2. All right, that concludes this video. Thanks for your time.